I couldn't have messed that up any better if I tried. <laughs> anyway, um, what's up, guys? Welcome to another one of these little drawing videos. Uh, sorry about the being late. I uh, ran into a little problem, but we got it squared away. Um, but uh, appreciate everybody that's going to be uh, checking this out. I, it's This is kind of last minute. I didn't throw this up very well, so hopefully we get a couple people in here. But uh, for everybody that does come in here and see this later on, What's up? How's it going? Um, and uh, welcome to what will hopefully be more uh, the first of uh, many of these things. But um, yeah, we're going to do some eyeballs today. So I'm going to go ahead and um, first off, I'm going to go ahead and uh, what I did, uh, just, I just wanted to touch on a couple of things real quick. Um, I grabbed a couple of uh, some, some uh, tutorials and stuff. Uh, this is Robert Marzullo's book. Uh, Robert's a pretty cool guy. Um, and uh, he has an amazing, amazing YouTube channel. And uh, if you have not seen it, I, I highly recommend going and checking it out. It's in the description. Um, but yeah, he's got uh, tons and tons and tons of really cool um, um, drawing tutorials and whatnot. He really breaks them down really well. And uh, on his channel especially, he's just got just mountains and mountains of this stuff. So if you're trying to learn how to do uh, comic book art... Uh, great channel to check out. Definitely check out the book. Um, and uh, I pulled one of the lessons out of it. That's this one right here. So we're going to do a little bit of this. Um, like uh, I like promoting other people's stuff. So, And uh, I've learned a lot from Robert over the years. So we're going to go ahead and do that. As usual, we're not going to use any fancy stuff. Um, I'm just going to grab a piece of paper out of a, my sketch pad here. If I find a page that it doesn't have crap on it. And uh yeah, we're gonna do some we're gonna do some practicing. Um I haven't drawn anything in like three or four days, so I'm really I'm really uh slacking off. Not happy about that, but uh yeah, anyway, go ahead and go ahead and get to that. My uh check it out here. So but anybody that uh, drops in. And I am just hammering this whole thing together, by the way. But uh, anybody that drops in wants to come in and hang out. So you grab that uh, copy to clipboard. Go into comments. Drop that in there. Cool. I. Yeah, and again, I don't really expect a whole lot of people to come in here today. Not when you uh, throw something together last minute like this. But it helps me get my crap done. So, but uh, and yeah, and uh, what I do, what I do is like I do like if I'm going to practice something, um, I'll either do it uh, right on my head. But if I really want to like examine what somebody else is doing, like uh, I got some J. Scott Campbell examples here. You know, he does, uh, he does that really good, uh, you know, that sexy, smoky eye kind of look. Um, some examples uh, downloaded off the internet, interwebs. If I could get uh, the page to come off of there. My, my camera's, is my camera all, it is, it's all bent. What the hell? But yeah, got some examples there. Got some Jim Lee. You know, a little bit of the greats, and uh, we're gonna try. We're gonna do a couple of them. Wow, I'm telling you, man, I am really like, I did not prepare for this at all today. I'm running behind like crazy too. So, but anyway, let's go ahead. We'll go ahead and uh, get started on here. We're gonna use Robert's uh, Robert's tutorial to warm up, and uh, like I said, guys, definitely check out. Uh, his channel over on Robert Marzullo. Um, check out his um, his tutorials over on Skillshare. Um, the dude knows this stuff, and he's been around forever and a day. Again, no fancy pencils or anything like that. Just a cheap, you know, mechanical pencil, cheap piece of paper. This is practice. Practice, practice, practice. So. 
And, uh, well, you know what? It might help if I turn the rest of my lighting on, too, wouldn't it? God. There we go. Let there be light. All right. So, as usual, we're going to do the iterative drawing thing. Um, basically, draw an eye. Uh, look at it. Look what uh, worked, what didn't. Draw it again. Do it about 10 times. So, uh, basically, we're just trying to build that muscle memory. So, I just kind of... I'll block it in like that. It's actually kind of small. Let me make it a little bigger so it'd be easier to see in the camera. So and we're doing the, I'm gonna do the male eye here. So male eye is a little less round. It's got more of that angular thing to it. So I usually just kind of do a box screen. Hey Tomic, what's up, man? How's the stash today, brother? <laughs> Appreciate you stopping in, man. And uh, let me uh, let me grab that uh, link real quick there. Do, do, do. Copy the stream. Paste. Is my mic working? Yeah. I don't know why I. I don't know why I was asking if it was working. It's not like there's anybody in here talking to me. Uh, look, you're really good. <laughs> yeah, my my box is looking really good. <laughs> but uh, I, I just, you know, it, it's easier for me to start with that than, than, than trying to throw, like, a bunch of curves and stuff in. But then, you know, you just come here. And then that's actually something interesting that Robert does. Uh, Robert does the... Um, he does the uh, the tear duct here, like right here, um, in his eyes. And a lot of artists, like if you look at, um, actually, let me, uh, let me pull some of those examples back up here. So right here we've got we've got uh, Michael Turner, who's like one of my favorites. If you look, he doesn't really do that. He doesn't really put like the the tear duct in there. This is a uh, he he draws a this is actually a younger character, so the eye is a lot bigger. But he doesn't really do the tear duct or anything like that. You know. And then you got Jim Lee, and sometimes Jim Lee's weird because sometimes he does because like right here you can see he does here, but he doesn't really over here. You know. And then you got uh, let me see if we can pull some other ones up here. Yeah, and here's that there's that one I, I was looking at earlier. Some of them do, some of them don't. So I guess it kind of depends. J. Scott Campbell, you know, he uh he kind of does a little bit, but you know, it's uh it depends. Like and then like right here on this one, like Jim Lee, he really puts that sucker in there. So yeah, it's really pronounced on this one. So it's interesting. It's it, it 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 completely depends on who the artist is and whatnot. But uh, let me go ahead. Like Jim Chung, Jim Chung. Yeah, it's um, and like uh, that's like uh, that you know that discussion we were having the other day uh, over on Jimmy's channel where um, all these artists they kind of feed off of each other. So you're gonna see things bleed in. From other artists, and uh, I'm not really actually. I'm not really worried about erasing our lines right now. So we got the basic form there. Actually, my eye is actually a lot, uh, lot uh, plumper than uh, it's more like a female eye. I'm trying to do the guy. It's like they're usually more angular. So we kind of we butch this up a little bit. But hopefully uh, Robert won't have a problem with me uh, you know, showing this uh, scan out of his, out of his book. But yeah, I, like I said, I, I, I really like this book and I want uh, I want other people to, uh, to know about it and to check his stuff out. Definitely, like I said, definitely check out his, uh, his Skillshare and stuff. Just trying to make a small YouTube channel at the moment to show myself. Yeah, dude. And, and I'll tell you what, it's very motivating. Um, it, it does help you kind of like figure out what you want to do and it, and it gets and it, and it gets you to work. 
you know, that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this thing. Uh, I got really lucky and uh, Jimmy, you know, he brought me in over there at his channel and uh, being able to, to, uh, you know, pick their brains and stuff like that is, uh, that's awesome. It's amazing. But, um, and of course we got here and now you notice with the guy's eyes, the uh, eyelid is way less pronounced, way, way less pronounced. Let me pull this over here a little bit so we can see it. So you got the eyelid here on the male. It's just barely, it's like a little slit, you know, it's just, uh, but with female eyes, it's, it's much more pronounced. It just gives it a rounder, rounder, more pleasant shape. Thin that line up a little bit. So let me just come across. Oh, that's awful. Yeah, dude, I saw that. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, I have to work tonight. I'm gonna download it and, um, I'm going to watch it at work and uh, I might draw along with it. So right here, so kind of, it's a big guy. So the thing I noticed that uh, Rob does, and he kind of, right there. So the thing I noticed that uh, Rob Marzullo does is um, uh, because, you know, he's not really, you know, he's not really drawing the, the, uh, uh, and then anatomically accurate eye, the eye, the um, iris and everything for the eyeball. He doesn't draw like a like a lot of a lot of people. They'll draw like the whole circle in the in the picture. The top of his circle is cut off up here at the top, and that's to indicate that the eye is kind of the eyelid is resting on top of a ball. So, and then he. With uh, well, actually, it depends. Sometimes he will, and sometimes he won't. Um, sometimes he won't connect it all the way down, which is actually that's kind of like how I've always done it. Is rather than having it connect at the bottom here, it's kind of left open because then you just kind of build that thing up there. But uh, you guys practicing at the same time? I know Tomix. I know Tomix probably practicing because he's uh he's uh out of school. They shut down all the schools for the rest of the year, which was uh pretty crazy. There we got so we got do, 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 do. I really do got to get a music player, so put some music in the background while I'm doing this. <clears throat> I can't wait to get my new computer. My new computer is going to be here on Thursday. And uh, I can actually go about setting everything up the way I want to. So this is actually a lot thicker at the top here, the way he's doing it. With the guys. And also, like you know, obviously with uh, with most guy, with most guys, I shouldn't say all all guys, but most guys, you're not gonna get a whole lot of um, eyelashes. It's gonna be, it's a lot more sharp. It's a lot more sharp angles with the guys. I wonder. Uh, I know what we're supposed to do. Uh, we're supposed to do another hangout, uh, hangout kind of video um, or stream this weekend. I'm actually kind of hoping that Dave shows up uh, for that one. Um, I know, and since he's he's doing videos now, he's got his setup going. Uh, those were a lot of fun. It was, it was just a lot of fun picking those pe pe picking people's brains like that. And I know you guys, like Joe Will, <laughs> like Joe Wills, yeah. <laughs> Poor Joe, man. Joe is long suffering, man. Let me tell you. We went over there. Oh yeah, uh, Joe Willis. 
No, it's no, it's Joe Wills. Joe of the Wills. I just, I, I'm really excited for those guys, for him, man. Um, just that, uh, you know, just came on as a fan and everything. And now he's doing a, now he's doing a book with Jimmy. So then you got to kind of delineate the eyelid here. And again, this is all really super rough. But uh, doing these exercises like this kind of helps build that. Like I said, it builds that muscle memory. But, yeah, I can't wait to see uh, what uh, Joe and Jimmy put together. I don't, and I kind of like breaking these up. Like, I don't like putting like a, a solid line down there. If you... And then that's the other thing too is um hopefully Dave does live streams in the future would be good. Yeah, he, oh he's going to, dude. It's not a matter of it's not a matter of if he's gonna do it, it's a matter of when. Um, because he is crazy busy. But I know he wants to he really wants to start building uh building uh into the community. So um, because what, what's going on, you got to realize is a lot of, uh, a lot of these artists and whatnot, um, they're starting to look else outside of the industry, especially now because we don't have conventions and stuff. You know what I mean? There are no conventions or anything. So they're all looking, they're looking into different areas. And like, like right now you've got like, uh, you got a lot of creators that are, that are, and it's a really cool time. There's a lot of creators that are looking in there, creating, stuff for themselves you know they're not going through marvel and dc and i and make no mistake i like marvel and dc um i'm a i'm a i'm a, I'm a super old school comic book fan i love marvel and dc but uh, uh hey alt arthur brown what's up man hail to you sir but uh a lot of them are looking elsewhere right now because you know there's just you know the industry is kind of uh, held up right now. It's 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 struggling. Put some highlights in here. That is a big tear duct, man. This dude is a crybaby and a half. <laughs> but um, but yeah, you you got you got guys like like Sean Gordon Murphy just launched his book. Um. The plot holes, which looks really freaking good. I'm a big fan of Sean Gordon Murphy. And I know he he's a bit of a controversial character right now, a controversial uh figure right now, but I think he's a, I, I genuinely think he's a good guy. And um I think he's just a little misunderstood. And the other thing too is you gotta remember not everybody's a crusader, you know what I mean? Um not everybody is uh you know strapping it on and ready to go to war. So, but, uh, and then it the, looks like uh, we got here, we got some, some cross hatching to delineate this. And that's one of the cool things I like about Rob, Rob Marzillo's work is, uh, the way he, the way he breaks down his, uh, his tutorials and stuff. And like I said, guys, those, those links are in the chat. Go check them out. Um, they're, they're very, very good. He's very good at what he does. And, um, yeah, definitely check out, like I said, um, where'd I put it? Check out his book. Learn to draw action heroes, Robert A. Marzullo. Um, I know he doesn't get a lot. He doesn't get a lot of uh, a lot of royalties from the book, but I think it's a good place to start. Um, I really, really do like his videos, and uh, he's just uh, you know he's one of those guys I've been following for a long time. So, and uh, if you especially especially you younger guys like you, Tomic, um, learning those fundamentals and whatnot. Uh, you really need to like, like they, he's really good. He, that's a really good person to check out to help you figure out how to break things down. So, 
just uh, throwing in a little bit of cross hatching on this. And these are good warm ups to do too. But, uh, and let's uh, see here. Uh, I need Rob's brushes for Procreate, but at the moment I'm broke. Yeah, dude, you know what? Um, just, uh, you know, e even if you don't have the brushes, the, the, uh, a lot of the stuff that Rob, a lot of the videos that he'll do, uh, he just uses the basic uh, the basic stuff out of Procreate. Out of like Procreate or uh, Clip Studio. Um, he just uses what he can find out of there. You know, and actually I'm going to change this. I'm going to throw a little bit of Jim Lee in here because Jim Lee does something I really like when he, when he draws eyes is he kind of breaks the, uh, the pupil up. So I think, I think it's cool, but um, yeah, check out a lot of, check out some of Rob's, uh, Rob's videos. He, um, he just does, he just uses the basic stuff. Um, because he's, you know, he's trying to show people, you know, you don't, those things are nice to have, but they're not necessary, you know, and don't get me wrong. I've, I've been playing with, uh, with Jimmy's brush set, uh, the last couple of days. I actually, next time I stream with him, I got to ask him a question. And then of course we got, uh, I usually just do this as a, Solid line because I'm not all that concerned about the eyebrow right now. I'm fo I'm I'm focusing more on the actual eye itself. But um, you know he uh it, they're nice to have and everything, but they're not necessary. I know a lot of people that uh, make amazing art and they just use the basic brush set that comes with it um i can't remember his, uh, his name right now off the top of my head but uh there's a, a comic pro i don't have to be friends with them to enjoy the art yeah i agree I, at some point you know uh, what the way i look at it man is like i said i'm, I'm an old man <laughs> so I don't have time. I don't have enough time left in my life to get bent out of shape over every little thing. Uh, as long as the person, as long as the person is uh, is 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 decent and, um, you know, and, and upholds uh, you know the basic principles of what I believe in, you know, like uh, you know, pr just producing truly good work, you know, based off of merit. Um, good interaction with uh, fans, and you know, just isn't a jerk. You know, I can I can put up with a lot of people, man. We're not we're not all going to agree about everything all the time, but uh, but yeah, it's um, it's an interesting time, man. Do the Captain Rogers trick? Be frozen in ice. <laughs> Yeah, dude, that'd be, it'd be nice if uh, if you could if you could slow time down like that, man. But uh, actually, this kind of comes up over here a little bit. But um, yeah, it's um, my rule of thumb is as long as they don't give in to cancel culture to paint people as Nazis or stop anyone from making a living, I'm good with them. Yeah, cancel culture can suck it. I'm not. Uh, I'm not a fan of all that either. Cancel culture is. Uh, cancel culture is for people who. Uh, who know their argument is BS and. And uh, don't want to be confronted with the truth. But um, even so, man, like I don't care. Like you, know, you can live. Everybody's. Everybody has the. Has the right to live their life as they see fit. And I'm not here to make enemies. I'm not here to make enemies. I got uh, got plenty of those in my life. I don't know. I just I don't know. It's like I I've mellowed out a lot in my old age. Old age. I'm talking about myself like I'm half dead. 
I've had people be like, be like, dude, you're like, you're depressing to be around sometimes. I'm like, I'm just being a realist. You know, it's like, uh, if I was, if I'm being completely honest, I'm closer to dead than I am alive. And now everybody in the chat's like, geez, dude, that's morbid. <laughs> It's like, well, now that we're all depressed, but no, I, um, you know, people are, I, I, I welcome people to discuss things and, uh, you know, just, just be, just be patient with each other a little bit. Where the heck is my thing here at? But yeah, I saw that, uh. I saw that uh, that uh, clown piece that Dave did, and I was like, "Whoa, that is awesome!" I'm glad, and I'm glad he's back. I'm glad he's, I'm glad he's, um, he's doing these uh, these these streams again because that guy has. He has so much knowledge and so much uh, uh, talent, and he and he wants to give. To, and he, he wants to share it with people. You know, you know, this is a guy that takes people in and uh, goes out of his way to to um, to uh, build them up. So I'm just, I'm just killing some windows here. All right. By the way, everybody, can you, can you guys hear me okay? I want to make sure that my mic's working and everything. Well, now that we're all depressed. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that, man. Uh, all right. So we're going to go ahead and uh, basically we're just going to do the same thing we just did. But we're going to do it about 10 times. You know, like I said, in, actually, I put the thing away because I want to see if I can uh, remember all the steps here. But how are you guys working to do today? How are you uh, anybody working on anything? Anybody doing any uh, working on getting better? This is actually come down here a little bit. Working on improving. Always, always. Long way to go. What's that? I'm trying to remember that uh, that poem that there used to be. Is it uh, miles to go before I sleep? And I have promises to keep. What was the what was that movie? It was um. God, I think it was uh from Russia with Love or something like that. It was about sleepers. Haven't worked on my Spider-Man drawing because I've been learning from other videos. Yeah, dude, dude, you know what? You know what I do? Like I've got shoot, where is it? I've got a couple of pieces I've been working on that it's slow going because I don't want to one, I don't want to ruin them. Oh, I'm over here breaking everything. Hang on a second. You know. And this, like this one, I started this one on Jimmy Stream like over a week ago. Um, so I'm slowly getting, I'm slowly blocking this thing in. And I've got this one over here. I actually inked the hat on this guy a little bit. But I get this one I'm working on. And I'm just going back and forth between them. But I'm doing these exercises and stuff. I'm, I got no reason to, I've got no reason to rush, you know. I'd rather take my time and do it right because I know I'm slow. I'm I'm ridiculously slow when it comes to uh, it comes to drawing, but I would rather take it slow, take my time, and not ruin it than uh, you know kind of force myself and and wreck everything. So. It's just, uh, you know, I think it's worth to, if you're not comfortable throwing a particular line or something in the beginning, why are you going to force yourself if you're just going to do it wrong? Learn how to do it right. Come back to it. 
and uh you know build up that way it's gonna be it's gonna take time it's gonna take time I finally shaved and cut my hair after days and days of drawing Archangels of Wrath. Can, oh, hey, what's up? Oh, Kingdom Comics. Hey, what's up, man? Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Uh, so I'm going back to it though. Uh, Bob, I'm as slow as a sloth, man. Black Panther can go can go past me by ten years, dude. I had a piece. I posted like the if you go on my Instagram. The last piece that I posted was that uh, Battle Made Knuckle Bomb that I was working on and um, as a fan piece, which, by the way, uh, congratulations to Kyung Lee for uh, launching Battle Made Knuckle Bomb 2. But um, I, uh, I posted that thing, and it's like, I'd say it's like 70% done. That was a year ago. I haven't touched that thing in almost a year. So when I say I'm slow, I'm actually kind of lazy, which is one of the reasons why I started doing these drawing streams again, because I'm trying to break myself of that crap. And uh, it's I'm really bad. I'm really, really bad for it. I'm really bad for it. And I'm, I'm hanging out with these guys, these, these guys that are legit pros. And I'm just like, you know what, dude? Get off your butt. Get something done. You know, and I mean, I see the stuff that they do, and it, and it, it's and I want to be able to do something, you know, it, cl at least close to that level. I mean, I don't know if I'm ever going to get there, but if I could get, you know, remotely close, I would be very, very happy. And. Um, yeah, I mean that's what happens. That happens when you hang around with people like the like uh, like Jimmy and Dave and Robert and uh, and Joe. Joe man, Joe impresses the hell out of me, man. That guy. That guy is legit. He's one, Joe is one of those guys. You see him, you see the work he does, and it's like, where have you been hiding? You know, it's like, come on, man. You need to be that Joe needs to be like out there for everybody to see. And I'm glad he's doing this project with Jimmy because I think he's going to tear it up. I think uh, he's going to come out of, he's going to be this dark horse that just comes out of nowhere and he's just going to impress everybody. Uh, I know he's impressed me. And I hope that at some point uh, he gets that book that he's been working on and, and helps in that and gets that off the ground and, Beyond, uh, I know he's, I know he's, he's doing pages for it and everything, but a lot of it is very conceptual, and I'm hoping that uh, this encourages him to really push and get that out there because that book actually sounds really, really cool. Uh, Tomic's the same, same. Yeah, dude. The thing is, Tomic, man, you got, you got, you got time on your side, brother. I mean, I mean, don't, don't take that the wrong way. Don't, don't take that to mean like, like you can just, you know sit on your hands, but, um, you're young, man. You've got, uh, you've got the time to, to make some mistakes and, and figure some stuff out. And then, uh, I do see, and, and you know, not, uh, I'm not the kind of person to glad hand people and, and, uh, tell them, Oh, you're amazing. That, that's, that's fantastic. You're amazing. And then be like, Oh, this guy actually sucks. I see some some real talent in you, man. Um, and if you've got the passion to back it up, uh, I, I think you could really do. I think you could do well. And that's the cool thing about uh, what's going on right now in uh, this. Uh, you know, people are calling it a comic revolution. Um, the thing that people are learning is, as much as we love Marvel and DC and whatnot. You don't need them. You really don't need them anymore. Um, like if you take a look at, uh, you know, like, like there's all kinds of people like that are doing amazing crowdfunded books. Um, like I said, Sean Gordon Murphy just launched uh, the book he's doing. 
That's a, that's a little too big there. And he's already at $150,000. And he has no platform. He has no platform. He doesn't have a YouTube channel. He's he's just he's doing that purely based off of the work he's done at DC. If he had a platform of like say like 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 Dave's got, like Dave's got uh, like, you know, like a, a pretty decent platform. He's got about ten thousand. Uh, I think he's up, I think he's up to eleven thousand now. Um, and he's going to climb fast. If if Sean Gord Murphy had a YouTube platform the size of say like Ethan Ethan Van Skyvers who had a hundred that he's got a hundred he's got over a hundred thousand. If he had a platform like that of his own, oh my god! You're talking, and even without it, he's probably going to pull. He's probably going to pull uh, at, at least three hundred fifty four hundred thousand dollars on this this book that he's doing, at least. But if he sticks to it, if he comes on, like he starts his own YouTube channel and everything, and he starts doing um, videos and whatnot, and he cultivates an audience, that dude's that dude wouldn't have to go back to DC ever. If he if he decided he was done at DC Comics and he didn't want to ever go back, he could do that. Um, Brian Polito, the guy who owns Lady Death, let me take a drink here. I'm actually kind of choking a little bit. The guy who owns Lady Death. That guy is like the gold standard for crowdfunding. Every year, he makes more and more and more and more and more money and does better and better and better for himself. The first, uh, I think it was back in 2017 was when he did the first, uh, the new Lady Death line. And I think the first book made like 35000 like that. His last one, if I'm not mistaken, was like 350000 So... He has figured it out. You know, that guy's, you know, he figured it out. He, he found Maxwell Silver Hammer, man. And, and, and we see all these other people doing these crowdfunded books and stuff like that. And then a lot of, a lot of attention is now being put focused that way. And I'm not saying I want DC and Marvel to go away. I love, I love DC and Marvel. Batman is like, that's the character that got me into comics. But as far as like being able to create, it's not necessary anymore. They're not necessary. And, and and honestly, a lot of comic book companies are beginning to see that are, are beginning to see that. And uh, you got companies like Antarctic that are basically telling these creators, go out, crowdfund your book. And when you're done fulfilling, bring the book to us and we'll publish it uh, the normal way. Um, and there's a couple of uh, books that are doing that. I know um, the book Rags. It's a, a like a zombie apocalypse uh, uh, comic. Uh, that's what they that's what they do. Um, Matthew Weldon uh, and uh, I can't remember his name off the top of my head. The guy who writes it, Punchline. That's what they do. Uh, Black Hops, which again is one of those books that doesn't sound like it should work, but it does. Um, a lot of people are doing that. Keenan comes says, I agree. Hopefully the internet levels the playing field for newcomers. I am still learning and raising the bar for myself. Yeah, dude. And, and that's the thing, man. There's people, there are people who have been doing YouTube and stuff like that for a long time that are now getting ready to start doing uh, their own properties. And you got like these guys, like, like, like James Reyes. I love James Reyes, box office artist. If you guys have never checked him out, check him out. Um, he's got over a, he's got almost 1.5 million subscribers. And you think about the fact, you know, like someone who has a hundred thousand subscribers can do a book and it will be ridiculously successful. How much more for someone like that, who has a massive, massive following how much greater would their success be? So you think about that, like someone like, like James who has like 1.4, 1.5 million subscribers. If even 10% of the people that follow him buy his book, 
that's a hundred. That's basically a hundred and fifty thousand books sold at like twenty five dollars a pop. I was gonna come in, but uh, my PC is acting up, glitchy. Seeing if I can fix it now. That's no problem, man. You know, like I said, that's, this is this is very chill today, man. Very chill, and I'm not gonna be on here for real long. I've actually got to go play Dungeons and Dragons. Um. So I wouldn't worry about, it, dude. I'm gonna be doing this. I'll be doing this a lot more going forward. Um, I just had a, like a, like today. Today was crazy. Um, my new computer. Like I said, I can't. Oh God, I can't wait. My new PC is coming in. Um. Uh, it'll be here on Thursday. So I had to go buy it, and I actually had to go buy a new monitor because I didn't realize this, but uh, someone in my family uh, sold my monitor. They they sold my monitor, and I didn't, wasn't paying attention. And I'm like, really? You're just going to sell my crap out from underneath me? <laughs> That's my family. That's my life. Um, but, uh, but yeah, now that, that, now that I got my new system coming and all the, some of the problems I've been having are going to be going away, um, I'll be doing a lot more of these kind of streams. And I want to do this kind of thing too, man, where I just want, I just want to hook up with people and talk about comics and talk about art and learn, learn from each other, you know, Encourage each other, and uh, who knows, man? Maybe, uh, maybe one of you guys in the chat. Maybe you'll get together with somebody in the chat. Maybe you'll get together with each other, me or or Jimmy or somebody, and and uh, you'll be the next Joe Wills doing a uh, doing a, a top shelf book with top shelf creators. Maybe you'll be the next one. I'd love to see it. I'm going to play with this a little bit. See how it comes out. Um, but yeah, we have five man chaos. We have five man chaos matches. Those eyes are staring in my soul. There we go. <laughs> I've actually been practicing. I've, I've been practicing eyes a lot lately. I don't know what it is, man. It's like, well, it, I do know. I do know what it is because it's one of the things that I struggle with. I struggle with well, I struggle with everything, but um, they're one of the things that I struggle with, and they um, they're also, especially if you got a close up, man. They're also super important because the first thing that everyone's going to notice about a character is going to be their face, and the first thing on the face they're going to notice is their eyes. You know, and there's a reason why they say the eyes are the window of the soul, so. And uh, nothing will pull you out of a character faster than if they've got a lazy eye, man. <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like, what is wrong with this picture? Something doesn't fit. Uh, hey, speaking of DD, any suggestions for my 12 year old to learn DMing? Any simple DMing tutorials out there? There's a book. You know, you know what? The, the best piece of advice I can give is don't overcomplicate things. Um, I would suggest uh, if, you're, if your son is looking to become a dungeon master, um, they have the D&D &D starter kit. Run, run, the, um, run the module that comes with the D&D &D starter kit. It's actually really, really good. It... Uh, it gives you everything that you need and it helps you figure out if this is, if that's what you really want to do. Um, I've been playing Dungeons and Dragons for 30 years and I still, and I'm still figuring things out, man. Um, but the one thing I can say is definitely don't overcomplicate it. It's not, it's not that crucial and um, just have fun. It's all about having fun, man. All about having fun. Wow, this eye is much bigger, than, longer, and wider than this one. I just noticed that. But um, yeah, and and there's a lot of really really good uh, modules and stuff out there, man. And, it, and every, everyone's like, some people will poop. It was like, dude, dude, you're just you're just copying something. Those modules exist for a reason. You know, they exist because they're a they're good, and b they teach you. So. 
um, yeah, just, you know, just tell them, you know, run some modules and, and cause modules can be really fun. Modules can be a lot of fun. Okay. So comparing this eye to this eye, this one is way more, this is way too angular. This, these two don't look anything alike. This is, that's what happens when you're not looking at uh, the step-by-step -step tutorial. But then again, now that I look at this, I can see, okay, well, I need to, I need to pull this down. I need to shorten it up. I got to put a little more arc in the eyelid and uh, not, not be so, so goofy with the cross hatching. Cross hatching can muddy things up really bad. We got the starter kit. So maybe, yeah, the, the, the starter kit's actually really good. The starter kit, it, uh, the, and a matter, matter of fact, the adventure that comes with the starter kit, the mines of, uh, uh, the mines, I can't remember the name of the city, but I'm actually running that. That's what actually, actually what I'm running right now. Uh, Art T. Bear. Oh my God, man. Art, the, the, the great Art T. Bear stopping it on my stream saying, Bob, kicking ass and taking names. Well, um, I'm taking names. I don't know about kicking ass, Art, but, um, yeah, it's uh, I'm I'm trying to get something done. I mean, I'm there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of people asking questions in here, guys. Uh, and by the way, got uh, um, get Tomic, uh, Tomic Art, uh, uh, 15 year old kid there, Art, uh, looking to get into the looking to become a comic book artist. Uh, I think he's got real talent, man. Um, Tomic Art T Bear is one of uh, one of the uh. The biggest names in comics, man. That guy has been around forever. He's a he's a superstar inker and penciler. That guy, you name an artist, that guy has done it. Yeah, the yeah, the minds of Fandelver. But uh, yeah, definitely check out Art's stream. Art was doing some really cool stuff today, man. I don't know if you guys uh, um, are familiar. Well, I'm sure um, most of you are, but. Uh, uh, Mike Mignola, uh, one of the best, one of the most amazing uh, uh, comic book artists ever, in my personal opinion. Art was inking. He's been doing these uh, art, not art, but uh, Mike has been doing these um, these daily sketches, and they're and, and he, he, Mike has a really crazy imagination. So he's putting there some of these really really cool sketches. These these really cool, almost impressionistic sketches. But um, art's been inking them on, on and uh, it's it's like like I said, man. We gotta get art on Jimmy's channel one of these days, and so that I can see these two these two truly great inkers picking each other's brain a little bit and just playing off each other because I think that would be interesting. And art has stories about everyone and everything, and uh, I. I, I I feel very, uh, very blessed to be able to, uh, to be able to hang out with him every Friday when we do our pontificator stream. He definitely, uh, he's definitely a wealth of knowledge. The Pokemon, ones, yeah, that, yeah, that he's doing the, he's, he's doing the Pokemon ones, but uh, what he was doing before is, he was doing, um, he was taking like almost like Mister Peanut. But he was taking, he was making like these gentleman characters and stuff out of like different vegetables and things. Like I said, crazy, uh, like a crazy, crazy, crazy uh, creative mind. And then uh, he was doing the Thundercat, and he was doing Thundercats. And that's uh, what Art was uh, inking today. He was doing Chitara. So definitely go check that out, guys. And also check out um, Art's, Art's Indiegogo's over on, uh, he's got, uh, I think he's. I think he's still got two of them going right now. I think uh, Black and White: The Second Chance is still available, and um, Chrono Mechanics. So, one of the greats, man. One of the greats. It's one of <laughs> Arthur Brown, the Uncanny Kodiak says it's on my bucket list to drink a bottle of wine with Art and his wife. Yeah, dude, and like, it, like I said, man, Art's a very. He's a very. He's a very affable person. And that's one of the things I really like about him is that he's, 
you know, someone who's been in the industry as long as he has and, and knows as much as he does, Art could just be like, yeah, what am I going to hang out with you plebeians for? But, uh, but he doesn't, you know, he's a good, he's a, he's a good, uh, salt of the earth kind of guy. Plus he has some of the best rock stories you're ever going to hear because Art's a musician. He's a drummer and he, he's, uh, that's actually kind of one of the things I, I miss. He used to do a show called Kiss Corner where he talked about Kiss a lot because he's a huge Kiss fan. And uh, I kind of miss that because that that were some cool stories coming to that. But Art was – art. this is the kind of story that Art tells. Like Art – like right in the middle of something we're talking about, he's like, yeah, so we were playing the whiskey. And I'm like – wait, I was like, whoa, 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 dude. You can't just gloss over the fact that you were playing at the whiskey. It's like that's like that's like rock and roll – that's like rock and roll royalty history there, right there man. So, and uh, did you uh, did you get the uh, did you get enough people to give that away, Art? Because I know you needed four more people to buy uh, Chrono, and then you're going to give that uh, that piece away. Which, uh, by the way, Chrono Mechanics is over forty. I think it, what are you up to? Like forty five thousand. Actually, you know, what? hang on a minute. Let me double check. We'll see. Indie go 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 gadget. Actually, I'm gonna check out plot holes too. See how it's doing. Uh, do, do, do. through the woods. It's Chrome Mechanics. There it is. Chrome Mechanics Retro Refit. And white. So, Chrome Mechanics. Yeah, 42,517. Uh, we got. Uh, 300, uh, was that 580 backers? Sweet. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Freaking plot holes it at almost 140K. Wow. Amazing. Good stuff. Yeah, Tony, very, very nice to talk with many incredible artists. Very grateful to be uh, in all your presence. Yeah, dude. Like I said, uh, Art, we gotta get you to stop by over at Jimmy's uh, um, one of these days. I know you're, I know you're crazy busy and everything, but uh, man, if I could get, man, if we could get a stream, I can't. That's one of those things where I'd be like, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, leave the stream and I'm gonna let somebody uh, let let these guys come in here and and, and talks because I just want to be one of those people that sits and gleans from the knee of the masters. But if I could get Jim, Jimmy and Dave, Dave Finch, Rob Marzullo, Art T. Bear, Joe Wills. <laughs> man, I keep at, I gotta get you guys, get all those guys in a friggin' in a chat room together to us talking, man. I'm just gonna sit there like a friggin' like a like, like a like a little schoolboy learning from learning learning from the knee of the masters. Thanks for the shout out, Bob. No problem, Art. No problem, my friend. Thank you very much for uh, sharing with sharing with us what you do, sir. And you gotta do something like you got you got you gotta figure out something to do with like a kiss corner thing again, man, because that was entertaining as hell. It was like um, I never got a chance to talk to you about it on on the air, but I wanted to like. Uh, tell you a little i had a little little kiss story is um there was a uh, uh, one of the local uh, D, uh vjs uh disc jockeys he hated kiss and uh, i'm not the biggest kiss fan but I, I know a lot of their songs and stuff i mean i you know i grew up in that period and um they would do a challenge every day um uh, no every week every week and it was you know, uh, name a song from a band that fits this category. And every week I would come up with a Kiss song that would fit the category. And then one week he thought he stumped me 
because the, the category was food. And I was like, oh, crap. So I thought about it and I'm like, okay, well, tech is, I was like, so are we talking like, you know, specifically a food or can it be something that you consume like a food? And he's like, it could be something. He was like, and then as soon as he said, I said, cold gin. And I hung up the phone. <laughs> and he's just, he was like silent for like probably a, a good 60 seconds. And then he was just like, God damn it. <laughs> But that's my my kiss story. Uh, Tomek, uh, there are like the Justice League, and Bob will be like a Teen Titans member. <laughs> as long as I can be, as long as I'm Robin, as long as I'm Robin, because Robin is the best. And I know that uh, there's a certain uh, young lady that will argue that point with me, but uh, that's okay. She's wrong. Robin is the best. Unless we're talking about uh, Damian Wayne Robin, then uh, you know he can, you know, he can suck the pipe because I hate Damian Wayne. Tim Drake, greatest Robin ever. So this will probably be my last one here, guys. I gotta, I'm gonna try and actually try to force myself this through this one here. But uh, I should be do, I should do. I'm, I'm gonna keep doing these. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna try and do about ten or fifteen of these. Cold gin, lick it up. Yep. Dude, and I don't know what it was, man. Like, like I said, I'm not the biggest KISS fan, but I don't I don't hate KISS. This dude, he I'm like, how are you a friggin' disc jockey and you hate one of the greatest rock bands that ever existed? I mean, yes, I know they're egotistical as hell, but you know, I mean there's not a whole lot of other bands that have their own army. So but yeah, he freaking oh, dude, dude, he hated. I I think he may have had like a bad experience with Gene Simmons or something. But uh, I just I just like messing with him. <laughs> oh man, it's, it's like um, uh, some kind of vehicle, war machine. Click. That probably didn't help either that as soon as I would yell the title out, I would hang the phone up. But I was kind of an a-hole when I was younger. Well, more of one. Let's show that. If you're talking about the Batman answer, I say Dick Grayson. Dick Grayson is the Dick Grayson is the greatest Robin, but Tim Drake is the best Robin. Tim Drake is the best. Like Dick Grayson is the best hero. Um, and he is the first Robin and I, I like Dick. I don't, <laughs> that sounds all wrong. Um, I like Dick Grayson. I hate what they've done to him in the comics recently. Um, but I like Dick Grayson, but Tim, the reason why Tim is personally, I think he is the best Robin is he exemplifies what Robin is supposed to be. Robin is Batman's tether to keep from falling into the darkness. And Tim knew and understood that better than anybody. Um, that's the whole reason why Tim uh, wanted to, uh, he realized that he saw Batman was becoming more and more violent. He's like, he's losing his grip. Uh, he's falling into the dark. So he actually, and plus Tim is also the smartest of all the Robins. Tim, that's getting clipped. Yeah. <laughs> um, Tim, was actually so smart that he figured out that Bruce Wayne was Batman. Now this is before, you know, recent comics where basically he told everybody and their mother who he was. Um, but uh, Tim Drake was, uh, and he wanted, I mean, his thing was he wanted, he wanted to be a detective. He wanted to be the world's greatest detective. And Batman himself has said that if Tim continues going down the route that he is, he will one day surpass even Batman himself. He has actually said in the comics, and it's canon, that Tim is, he's the smartest of all the Robins. And um, Tim is also the uh, kindest and uh, most decent of all the Robins. 
And he's the one that had to work the hardest to get to where he was. Because unlike Dick, who was a natural athlete, Tim was not. He had no, he, his natural ability was not there. So he had to learn. He's the guy that basically busted his butt, busted his ass, and earned his spot, basically. So everybody else was given. He earned it. Uh, my fibers when Tim turns into Joker and Batman. Yeah, that's uh, the that's the uh, the the uh, Batman Beyond Return of the Joker. Yeah, that's a good that's a good episode. That's a that's a really good uh, movie. Animated movie. The anim DC. That's the weird thing about DC. 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 And thanks, Art. No problem, man. Thank you for stopping in, brother. Appreciate it. Uh, time to get back to the board. Yes, sir. You got deadlines to meet, man. Work to do. Deadlines to meet. Um, but uh, DC's animated movies are really, really, really good. I don't know. It's 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 in live actions that they stumble. It's the uh, the live action films are where they have problems. So, but uh, yeah, like. Uh, um, I haven't seen the latest one. I haven't seen uh, Justice League War yet. Or uh, no, Justice League Dark, the, the Dark Side War. I haven't seen that one yet. But uh, from what I've heard, it's really good. You know what I've noticed? I'm transitioning from a male eye to a female eye. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, because all I need to do to make this a female eye is to add like more eyelashes and stuff. Like, but the eye, did you notice how the eye just like it spread? It just got bigger and bigger and bigger. So I was like, yeah, oh, you know what? Screw it. Let's do it. I think my mind was automatic because I'm looking over here at this stuff. Uh, so, but uh, anyway. Justice League War is super good. Uh, like I would buy it when the Justice League live action movie came out. Yeah. Yeah, it's and I think everybody. Like, I think because those animated movies are so good, a lot of people look at the, uh, the, the at the stuff that they did that they've put out, and they're like, "Why is this not as good as this?" But then you have to you have to also remember that you're talking about two completely different groups of people. So, so we'll just erase that down. Just just league dark war, yeah. Um, I, I see. I like I like Justice League Dark. I like I like Constantine and uh, Zatanna. Those characters. Wow, this is a terrible eye. Wow, maybe I shouldn't have tried to change it midway through. Anyway, it's crap. <laughs> Jeez, this is so bad. Uh, I've been hearing a lot of buzz lately about the Snyder Cut. I know it's almost legend at this point, but apparently there's hope again. You know what? I didn't hate the Justice League movie. I get why people didn't like it, though. I mean, it's... When you're dealing with a character like Superman, Dark doesn't usually work very well. I understand what's, what uh, Snyder wanted to do. He wanted... Snyder wanted the, them to be more realistic. 
And to be fair, I get it. Um, I just don't think it worked in that particular context. God, this, this part over here is awful. Um, but you know, to, the, that being said, I didn't hate it. You know, um, I think part of the problem with it is Steppenwolf is such a generic bad guy. Um, see here, uh, Arthur Brown said, uh, I like the Batman Ninja Turtles animated flick. It was right. Dude, the Batman uh, Ninja Turtles comics were really freaking. Again, one of those things you're like, there is no way this is going to work. You know? Wrong. They were awesome. They were made. The, the art was fantastic. Uh, Freddie Williams is a freaking beast. Um, but yeah, I haven't seen the animated one yet. But I know I know it's based off of those uh, those comics. So that doesn't surprise me. Uh, Tom Mc, when I saw the Joker movie, I saw a glimpse of life for DC. Dude, you're how old? You're fifteen. The Joker movie was rated R, man. You're too young to be, you know, scarred like that. What am I kidding? I was watching R-rated movies when I was 13, 12, when I was 12 years old, so. Uh, the corruption of uh, America's youth. But... Yeah. Okay, guys. Um, like I said, this was going to be a short one because I got started late. I'll be doing another one of these. I'll, I'll, I will definitely be doing some more drawing tomorrow. Uh, I don't know what we'll be doing. Um, maybe some more eyes. Um, if you guys have any suggestions on things you want to practice, let me know. You know, like if you want to, like I want to practice feet. I want to practice heads. I want to practice trees. I don't know. Um, leave them in the comment section once this thing is up, man, or type them in the, the chat right now. But um, yeah. Gonna be doing a lot more of this stuff, guys. We all gonna get better together. Thanks for being here, guys. I appreciate it. I will see you guys uh, in the next stream. I know I'm doing about a billion of them. The mustache got him. <laughs> Thanks for being here, guys. Take care.